In chapter 6, we begin looking at the calculus of variations. Uh, as we'll see, the calculus of variations provides a very powerful toolbox for solving the, for the dynamics uh, in very complicated systems where Newton's laws, F equals MA, can be kind of difficult to solve. Uh, they allow us to study the dynamics of a system without regard to the specific coordinate system that we're using. So we don't necessarily have to use Cartesian. We can use all, any kind of coordinate system. And as we'll see, we can apply the calculus of variations and Lagrangian uh, statistics, excuse me, Lagrangian mechanics to solve uh, even the dynamics of very complicated systems. A nice, ex a nice example of a place where we can use uh, the calculus of variations is to study the shortest path between two points. So let's think about uh, an x and y coordinate system. Let's imagine we have one point and another point, point one, point two, uh, and we're interested in solving for the shortest path between those two points. Now, of course, we all know intuitively that the shortest path is going to end up being a straight line uh, in a, in a two-dimensional space like this, but, but how, do we, how would we prove that? Well, calculus of variations provides us a way to do that. So let's start by considering an arbitrary line. So this is a, a path uh, that's arbitrary connected to the two points. Let's imagine that uh, we've written the equation for this line uh, with y as a function of x. So here's y and y is going to be a function of x, meaning give me a, an x-coordinate, I can tell you what the y-coordinate is. Now, as you recall, the arc length, a little bit of arc length, along the trajectory, that can be written as ds, and then we've seen before that you can write ds in this way, so that it's the sum of the, of the square of two differentials, dx, dy, and then the square root of all of that. Now, if I divide this equation through, excuse me, if I the radical through by dx, what we find is we get an equation for ds that has the x derivative of y inside the radical times dx. So that's a little bitty arc length. Now if we want to calculate the whole length of our line, what we really need to do is to integrate that line, that ds, over the entire length of the line. So we're going to do an integral from point 1 to point 2, 1, 2, of ds. And so using our previous expression for ds, we find that that total length of that line is going to be the integral of that square root business. So that's, again, the uh, x derivative of y dx. So we're basically trying to integrate this thing. And what we want to show is that when we choose the right path, y as a function of x, we will minimize this integral. So we want to choose the right path such that we minimize this integral. Now, you, as you might expect, it's, it's not obvious how you can actually choose the right function y to minimize an integral, but the calculus of variation provides us a way to do that. Another physical problem in which we're, in which we're interested in minimizing uh, an integral uh, is uh, Fermat's principle. And so for Fermat's principle, what we have is we might have uh, two media uh, with two different indices of refraction. So here we're going to imagine there's two media, each with a different index of refraction. And we're interested in what path a light ray takes as it passes through these two different media. Fermat's principle tells us that uh, the light will take whatever path produces a stationary value for the time traveled from one point to the other. And so what that means is we want to find a maximum or minimum value for the total time traveled uh, by a light ray in going from one point to the other. Now, the time travel that takes for a light ray to travel from one point to the other, that's an integral over dt, the time. And of course, dt, we can write that as a little length along the path, ds, divided through by the velocity of the light. Now, of course, the velocity of light uh, is a constant in a vacuum, but it's not a constant when the index of refraction changes. And you may recall that you can write uh, 
the velocity of light in a medium using an index of refraction. So here, for example, this is the speed of light C in a vacuum, and the velocity of light as it travels through these different media, that's given by n, the index of refraction, which can be a function of position in our system, and you're going to integrate that over the path length. And so again, the total time it takes for the light ray to travel from one point to the other is given by this expression. And remember our expression for ds, and we can convert all of this into an integral over x in this way. So from point, uh, point 1 where x is, has the value of x1 and point 2 where x has the value of x2, and then we're thinking of our uh, index of refraction as being defined over x and y, and then ds, remember, the length is given by this. And so this is the total time tra uh, it takes for light ray to travel through these two media from one point to the other. And the question again is, well, what is the y value that we need in order to produce an extremum for this integral? That's for Mons principle. Now the, x, the n is a function of x and y. That's specified. So that's a function that we know. And so what we're looking for really is what y do we have to choose in order to produce an extremum or a stationary point for this integral? And the calculus of variations, as I said, gives us a tool for doing that. So in the next section, we'll look at that.